Volpe driver Davina Henton captured her first still on a pole one of her career at the wheel of car number six. However, the major news of the past couple of weeks has been the whole political war between the MCMA and the TM Master Cup Series officials. On Monday of last week, Master Cup Series Supremo Terry Schaffner gave an ultimatum to the MCMA. Race the round of Michigan, or you have your guaranteed entries for next season revoked. The MCMA teams have insisted that they need provisional entries for the round of Indianapolis in order to make their business viable in the long term. However, in order for the qualification procedure for the round of Indianapolis to be changed mid-season, more than 85% of the teams must be in agreement. That means, of the 16 full-time teams, there need to be 14 teams supporting a new qualifying procedure. Given that Hodges Walter Racing, Volpe and Gessler had all said that they were not going to approve of a system that would give manufacturer teams provisional positions on the grid, well, it's led to this frankly ridiculous situation where Team Sai USA, Michelin Sons, Black Diamond, Flash Racing, Owen Tagama Enterprises, Zenus Racing and Majestic Motorsports are not in action this week. Star Team Nomoto is technically an MCMA team, however, when they did not agree to boycott the round of Michigan, the MCMA wanted no more to do with Star Team Nomoto. Takumi Kadashima and his outfit are here, and they are in action. Lewis Kingston qualified very well in ninth. Nazuma Kazuyama is in for Tom Delgado this week. The only positive thing I've heard about this entire weekend from anybody is a statement made by Adrian Devereaux, who said that, uh, frankly, if there's only 22 cars on this racetrack, that means that the pit lane might actually be safe. And uh, I think I have to agree with him, because uh, the pit lane here is clearly not meant to host as many cars as the Master Cup Series has. There were some pit lane incidents in the Team Lights race, and uh, frankly, I'll be amazed if this track returns to the Master Cup Series circuit next season. Anyway, Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Davina Hinton and Craig Mummer on the front row. Arto Kekkonen and Davina Hinton's teammate Packer Carroll in row two. But as you see here, Hinton gets off to a pretty good start. Craig Mummer in the 29 car, his best qualifying run of the year by far. He really did not get a good getaway, and that's uh, pretty crucial, I think, for the outside line to get a good start if you're going to have any shot here. At the West Midland Bullring, this is very much a one-groove racetrack, and it looks like that's even more so than years past. Problems on the warm-up lap cost BJ Pushan to four laps. The 42 car pulled into the pits and uh, stayed there until lap five. Craig Mummert in car 29 has been having a pretty difficult season so far in a difficult car. He's great in qualifying, as I already mentioned, and he's got lots of short track experience from running in uh, the Modifieds. Middle Tennessee Motorsports may be coming to the Master Cup Series next year with, with Craig Mummert as one of their drivers and with his Bolden backing. This could even be an Independence Trophy campaign where Bolden could uh, maybe work on their car as an independent outfit and uh, then bring it to a full-time gig next uh, for 2014. Packer Carroll in car number two, he's reportedly been told to win a race or lose his drive. I just wonder if this is part of Cyril Volpe's infamous driver motivation or if the fact that Chris Davenport is waiting in the wings to jump up and take Packer's ride. Keep in mind that Leonid Roderick has also been rumored to take over uh, one of the two Volpe uh, seats, so it looks like uh, Volpe's not too happy with his current driving lineup. The Sova uh, pits on lap six due to a puncture and loses four laps in car number eight. Yulia Sova has been having a great run so far this season. Scott Stoidler quit the 74 team due to their participation in the uh, MCMA boycott. And uh, he's thrown away a potential title run as he's now driving for Tutino. And I'm not so sure that makes uh, him much of a better person than the team is boycotting. It doesn't exactly say much to his commitment to um, one particular team. Leonid Roderick and Michael Sykes, uh, both of them uh, said that they were behind their team's decision, but uh, were disappointed in it at the same time. Uh, here's Tom Moore in car number 52 having a hell of a run up in 8th place. Now there are some rumors that he might be in the frame for a full-time deal with uh, a new team if his speed keeps up. And uh, Tom Moore in this Lycoya did not do very well at Carbondale, his only other start. Uh, he got taken out fairly early on by Martinez, but uh, he's having a, looks like he's turning that around and putting in a respectable run today in car number 52. Adrian Devereaux is running in 13th place. It's not where we usually expect him to be, but uh, Adrian Devereaux has not been very comfortable with his car this weekend. In fact, he doesn't like this racetrack in general. He uh, really struggled here a couple of years ago. Last year, it looked like he turned it around, but uh, looks like the car is just not handling the way Devereaux likes, and uh, 
that's really what you don't want here, especially on a track like this. But um, here we are on lap 14. Matthias Taub is running in ninth place. He's been a bit of a rough diamond all season. Uh, uh, he's been pretty fast, but he has a lot of crashes as well in this uh, car number 10. Uh, I believe we'll be seeing Tao back with Gessler, but uh, I think he's going to have a new sponsor, and uh, we've got uh, fire in the hole. Tao in car number 10, and it looks like he's going to go out of the race. He'll be the first retiree. 22 cars started, two cars won't get points, and it looks like we know who one of those cars is already. Uh, Davina Henton in car number 6 is continuing to extend her lead. Now, uh, Henton might be leaving Volpe on her own accord because uh, Lynx might be forming its own Master Cup Series team, uh, and uh, Henton might be one of their drivers, and I can't exactly say that would be a bad choice because uh, Henton has been pretty solid this season. She's been faster than Packer Carroll quite regularly this season. As Lance mentioned in the pre-race, uh, Star Team Nomoto owner Takumi Kadashima benched Tom Delgado for this weekend after Delgado's ongoing health saga for the season. And Azuma Kazuyama is back in car number 18 this week. Uh, this car changes numbers depending on who's driving it. Kazi when it's car number 18, it's Kazuyama. And when it's a 37, it's Delgado. Kazuyama will be back in Indianapolis for this team. He might also be running Quebec as well. Now, Cameron Taylor is in this uh, hideous uh, yellow and white 126 car. He's about the only person who wanted less competition uh, out here, and uh, I don't know what that says about him. I think that just says that his attitude towards racing is about as ugly as the livery on that car, but uh, he didn't earn too many uh, fans with his attitude towards having uh, fewer cars here. I think, mean, generally speaking, uh, everyone but Cameron Taylor wanted uh, a full field here. Uh, and that car, two cars behind Taylor, that red and white car, that's Brandon Lario. We saw him at the beginning of the season in uh, the afterburner car. He's having a he's having a decent run, but he hasn't been terribly comfortable with that car uh, all weekend. However, uh, looks like they're going to wait to make adjustments on this 24 car, and then I think we'll see him back to the form he showed in Vegas, where he was very competitive. Arto Kekkonen is running in second place, but he's losing ground to Davina Henson, but at the same time, he's pulling away from Packer Carroll. Now, Arto really needs a good run today, especially when Adrian Devereux is not having such a hot run in car number one. Here is Dan Lechleiter, another one of the Independence Trophy cars, running in 15th place. Lar uh, Lario and um, uh, Cameron Taylor aren't having very good runs so far, and neither is Dan Lechleiter, as he's running in 15th place. Now, Really, I think uh, this is one guy who might also be jumping for joy that there's fewer cars here, but much to his credit, I think he also wishes there was a full field here. He's running in 15th place. Here's Vijay Pushanda's car, number 42. He's back on track. Now, this could be the last time we see him in car number 42, because uh, there's some talks that uh, the amount of money he brings may not be enough to keep him on the grid, and that would be a bit of a shame. However, Pushanda's reputation uh, is kind of suffering a little bit because Scott Stoidler has really blown him out of the water all weekend. And uh, now that you've put a top-line driver in uh, a Tutino, I think that's not reflecting too well on VJ Pushanda, who I think everyone thought might have been a little better than that uh, earlier on in the season. However, I'll have to wait till uh, Quebec anyway. Here's the, the running order on the left side. Here's Anthony Griffith, who's having a very respectable run in fourth place. He hasn't hit anything yet. He's had a very clean weekend. Power Stringer Incorporated is willing to fire him, however, to take Leonid Roderick on board. And those rumors are just coming when Anthony Griffith has turned his act around, and uh, he's been faster than Pliskin all weekend, and he's generally just not hit as many things as Pliskin has. Uh, Kurt Pliskin had a couple run-ins with the wall in practice, Whereas Anthony Griffith just seemed to take this track, uh, take this track up quite quickly. I was a little surprised. Davina Henton is putting VJ Pushanda another lap down. Pushanda is now five laps adrift, and uh, well, it, uh, to Henton having uh, not as many problems getting past him. However, Arto Kekkonen in the nine is going to find Pushanda to be a bit more of an, a uh, bit more of an annoyance, really. I don't think Arto. I think Arto Kakanemia just shook his fist at Pushanda because Pushanda uh, kind of pinched him down a little bit, and uh, that's going to give Henson a bit of an advantage. But it looks like Henson's jammed up behind Nasova. We're on board with Packer Carroll in the Myosoft entry, as uh, he is going to try to work on VJ Pushanda, who um, doesn't seem to know that Packer's there and that he's five laps down now. He's racing Yulia Nasova for position, who's actually in front of Davina Henson, but uh, 
I don't think you're gonna catch Nasova, and Nasova looks like she's gotten the message that the leaders are coming, and she's gotten around Charlie Waters. That's not for position. Nasova's four laps adrift as well, but um, she's faster than the leader right now. Charlie Waters is running in 19th place. Now, he's another guy who's not exactly had a, a, uh, a perfect weekend here so far. Charlie Waters has just been uh, complaining of the car not handling very well in his first run. Charlie Waters from Texas. He's uh, uh, not exactly done his reputation a lot of good this season, but, um, well, he's trying his hardest to turn that around, as you can clearly see. Um, and we're on board with Arto Kakinen. Uh, Arto Kakinen, a man of few words, is Davina Henton. Hits the pit lane. Oh, Henton overshoots the pit entry, smacks the wall. Wow. Now, Arto Kakinen. I said he's a man of few words. Um, he, most of his interviews don't hear him say too much. But he pits on lap 61. Arto Kakinen, not the most vocal of individuals on uh, any particular... Oh, wait a minute. Packer Carroll's engine's just given out. Packer Carroll is out after taking the lead for half a second. And now car number two goes out fairly early. Craig Mummert into the pits in car 29. Uh, here's Anthony Griffith in car number 08. He pits on lap 61 as well. However, there are some people that were able to stretch their fuel to go even longer. Ian Cooper, in particular, was able to go to lap 66 along with Luciano Savaral in the three. Scott Bates and is able to stay out and run even longer. Uh, Lewis Kingston, car number 17, pits on lap 67 in the uh, Nomoto. Kingston having a very uh, solid run here. Scott Bates on a lap 67 as well. And uh, when pit stop cycle out, Arto Kakinen is the leader. He's uh, not really been saying too much about his car uh, on the radio, so Kakinen is, looks like he's pretty happy with it right now. Looks like the only thing he is not too happy about is the traffic, but uh, I think other than VJ Pushanda, everyone uh, looks like they're behaving all right. Leglighter looks like he might have given him the outside lane, but Arto just wasn't there. Like Leiter being very respectful. Lewis Kingston and Thomas Moore, the, uh, the two cars in the picture right here, are the big movers. They run third and fourth. Moore, in particular, is having a very good run. Tom Moore, uh, that's a young American hopeful, and we'll have to see what he can do in the future. Uh, Adrian Devereaux is running in 10th, but he's not pushing the car, apparently, because I think he just doesn't want to crash. This car is not handling very well. It still seems to be a way too loose for Devereaux's liking. And uh, Adrian Devereaux just looks like he's going to say, well, it's not a good day, and just got to get home, uh, bring home as good a finish as possible. Davina Henton's in trouble in car number six. That's both the Volpes that have succumbed to mechanical problem. Okay, I don't see why Scott Storler needed to drive straight through the six car. I don't see how that was necessary. Luciano Savarol tries to miss the wreck or something. I don't know what he was doing in the grass, but he spun the car out, and he lost the... He lost a lap to that. Here's the restart. Lewis Kingston, car 17, is the leader of the race. Uh, Dan Leglider in the 110 car is off the lead lap. Scott Bates in the 88 car is running in second place. And there are only five cars on the lead lap, as you probably noticed from the scoring ticker right there. Uh, there you see Tom Moore in the 52 car. Uh, well, he's looks like he's going to lose the 17 car just a little bit. Lewis Kingston way ahead of him, but he's going to be able to get around uh, Azuma Kazuyama in the 18 car. So Tom Moore on a charge. Could Tom Moore pull an upset victory here? Dan Lecklider could really use another yellow because then he can just cycle around to the back of the pack and he'll be back in the race for the win, possibly. Scott Bates is running very strongly in the 88 car. The Oklahoma native is really been picking up the pace lately, and so is his teammate Ian Cooper, but we've really seen this 88 car just be very, very strong this year. Azuma Kazuyama in the uh, number 18 car is doing the best he can with as few starts as he's getting for Star Team Nomoto. He's having a very respectable run this, uh, very respectable run tonight. Cameron Taylor is running in sixth place, and I mentioned earlier he didn't make himself too many friends. There's going to be some people that are not going to be happy if he lucks into another top 10 finish in the Independence Trophy. Arto Kakinen is dropped back to 8th. He pitted under... Looks like the pit cycle didn't really come where he wanted to. He pitted under that yellow, and it sort of bit him because he's all the way back in 8th. Also bit several other drivers that were on the lead lap as well. That's why there are only five cars on the lead lap. Lewis Kingston is still in the lead, but everyone's going to have to pit for fuel with about 15 to go anyway. So I'm not really sure why uh, so many cars pitted under that yellow. It seems kind of nonsensical. Dan Lecklider is the first car to make use of that hit. The, wow, he overshot the pit entry, hit the pit wall. There's people trying to hot pit here. Gained so much time. Charlie Waters just did likewise. 
but you can gain so much time on pit in. So I can kind of understand why some people are pushing as hard as they are into the pits. Lewis Kingston, Tom Moore pit in lap 155. One lap later, Bates and Kazuyama. Bates goes a little wider than Kazuyama, and Kazuyama is able to get the spot uh, past Lewis Kingston in the pits. However, there were only a couple of laps to go when the field cycled out. Lewis Kingston was untouchable as he'd go on to claim his third career TM Master Cup Series victory. Tom Moore came home second, Kazuyama in third. Uh, Kazuyama and Bates had a pretty good battle in the, uh, between their pit crews. Uh, Tom Moore had a great run, and uh, he gets his first Master Cup podium in, I believe, only his second start. Charlie Waters uh, cleaned up his act very well. The pit crew did a great job in that 30 car to get him up to sixth place. He outraced Craig Mummer, and I think he did his reputation a lot of good tonight. Cameron Taylor, and I said he lucks into another top ten. Cameron Taylor kind of got really lucky at Brands Hatch when he came home tenth. Uh, due to a large amount of attrition that he wasn't really um, a part of any of that. And uh, he wasn't really terribly fast that weekend either. Kurt Pliskin had a pretty solid run. Brandon Leroux also, that 24 team, really made some adjustments on that car. And Leroux just made his way through the field and came home with the top 10, his first ever. Adrian Devereaux uh, rounds out the top 10. Martinez in the 7 car. We didn't talk about him at all because he kind of had uh, one of the most uh, uneventful races you could possibly have. Arto Kekkonen dropped through the field after um, that lap 90 yellow and pitted and things just didn't go right in that pit stop. He dropped all the way to 12th and kind of stayed there. Ian Cooper in the 777 car. Uh, looks like they had some problems in their uh, pit stops towards the end of the race along with the uh, the 9 car. Scott Stoidler in the Tutino had a pretty good run considering it's in a Tutino. Luciano Sobral had all sorts of pit lane troubles, wound up 15th. Anthony Griffith. Now, that's a car I didn't really mention much towards the end of the race. Now, that team really blew the pit stop at the end of the race, and Anthony Griffith dropped like a rock in the results. Yulia Sova uh, just did the best she could with what she had. She made up a couple laps on the track after getting off cycle early on, but she recovered for a 17th. I think that was the best she could do today. Craig Mummer had a disaster of a run. Uh, I don't think any one of his pit stops went right, and VJ Pushan just had a disastrous race in general. He wound up four laps down, and Davina Henson, despite winning the pole, failed the finish. Let's have a look at the Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship, leaving Michigan and entering Quebec. Adrian Devereaux still sits on top of the points charts. Arto Kakinen still second. Leonid Roderick is still third. He uh, wasn't too happy that uh, Flash Racing didn't want to race this week. However, Roderick made an appearance here himself, and... Uh, uh, he did the best he could for fan appearances, at least, so you can't fault him for that. Luciano Savarol came, uh, is still fourth in the championship, despite uh, having a good opportunity to leapfrog Roderick. He didn't take full advantage of that. Lewis Kingston, with his win, jumps up to fifth. Scott Bates to sixth. Scott Stoiler, um, well, he's going to be in the Tutina for, I think, the rest of the year, but his ride at Michelin's Hunts has been taken over by Swiss sensation Melanie Cleveno for... Um, I think every single, almost every single race uh, until the end of the year, but I don't think uh, all of them. We'll have to wait and see what Cleveno's schedule is like. Ashby is still sits eighth despite not racing this week. Henton uh, is ninth. Taub tenth. Nasova, Michael Sykes, uh, Jose Luis Martinez. Not too many changes actually in the top 20 in the championship, as you can see, because and pretty much everyone behind Jose Luis Martinez didn't even race this weekend. Anyway, let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings leaving Michigan. Not really a surprise that Mika Turvo's lead is still intact. Jacob Eichel still sits in second place. I think Eichel has a good shot of taking home the Independence Trophy. Dan Lechleiter was able to capitalize on his big opportunity to uh, get himself back in the hunt for the Independence Trophy. I don't think it's very likely that he's going to take it out. He's going to need another very strong run in order to do that. But uh, not looking too good for Lechleiter one way or the other. Cameron Taylor jumps all the way up to fifth place on the virtue of his two very lucky runs as he uh, sits in with a legitimate shot of winning the Independence Trophy. Uh, Carlos Donzello in the 21 car has one more race left, so Cameron Taylor in only two starts is already ahead of Donzello with three starts. Tom Moore and Gaspar D'Souza are tied to 122 points, but Tom Moore's second place finish means that he breaks the tie with D'Souza. Lario gets himself some more points in the 24 car. And, uh, well, I think uh, Ben Atkins is still in with a shot of winning the Independence Trophy. Even though it looks like he's way down there, he's only made one start so far. The reason I mentioned Ben Atkins is I believe he spent part of this weekend testing, preparing for the round of Quebec. That shows you what uh, the preparation level some of these Independence Trophy teams will take. We'll have to see if Ben Atkins' testing pays off 
during the Round of Quebec, which will be held on Canada Day.